Alex Alvarez, and today I'm going to be talking about the lytic cycle and the lysogenic cycle. Here we have the lytic cycle. What's going on here is the virus is attaching itself to the host. So it binds to the host. Then step two, the virus is also called a phage. The phage um, injects the its DNA material, its genetic material, into the host. So phage injects genetic material into host. Then, as it's happening, the phage's enzymes are destroying the host's DNA. So you see here, this is breaking up the host's DNA. And the next step, step four, um, the phage genome is directing the host to produce its components. And these components are like DNA and proteins. And so what's going to happen after that, it's going to initiate a spontaneous assembly and it's just going to self-assemble here in this page. This is self-assemble in here phage genome directing production of its components. <clears throat> In the next phase, um, basically the enzymes are breaking up. It's making it's making the it's making the bacterial cell wall. Basically, it's digesting it. The enzymes, so the cell begins to lyse, and it releases. Then it releases new phages. Cell lysis, enzymes, break down, cell wall, cell lysis, then it releases the new phages, and it repeats itself again over and over. And that's the lytic cycle. Now, I'm going to be talking about the lysogenic cycle. In this case, <clears throat> kind of the same process, except, well, when the virus binds to the bacterial host, in the next step, its genetic material is also injected into the bacterial host. And then the DNA or genetic material it begins to circulate. In this step, there are certain factors that determine whether or not it's going to take a lytic cycle or a lysogenic cycle. So for now, we're just going to say it took a lysogenic cycle. And as that occurs, the when the viral DNA, after it's been circulated and inserted into the host, the next step is that the, the genetic material, it binds onto the chromosomes from the host, the host chromosomes. So this forms a prophage. This creates a prophage. The prophage genome is then going to be copied with the cell's host, the host cell's DNA, and then it's passed on to two new daughter cells.
then cell division occurs. And you have two new cells that are infected with the prophage. Now, the prophage will then exit the bacterial chromosome and it could start a new lytic, cy lytic cycle. It could go back to the lytic cycle or it could just go over again and restart another lysogenic cycle. Now, the main differences between the lytic cycle and the lysogenic cycle are that in the lytic cycle, after everything's been done, the bacterial host is destroyed. However, in the lysogenic cycle, the bacterial host is not destroyed. And that is the lytic and lysogenic cycles.